This video is a great introduction to trees and it's made even better knowing that this is the last video in the discrete mathematics series. So a tree is just a simple graph and we know simple means no loops, no double edges, etc. It's connected, it's undirected for the most part. Um, well, a regular tree is undirected, yes, with no simple circuits, which means we know what a circuit is, where you can connect from one to the other and back to the beginning. Um, essentially what this means is there is a unique simple path between any two vertices. So say this guy down here and this guy down here, the only way I can get from one to the other is along this path. That's the only way that I could do it. So I have an example of a tree, not a tree. I included two things that would make it not a tree. The first is this guy right here is a circuit. It's a cycle where I can get from here back to here, and that's not okay. And then this guy is also a problem, which makes it not a tree, because this is a path to get to that vertex, but this is a different path to get to that vertex, and we should only have one path from vertex to vertex. So a rooted tree, and the picture, just a heads up, is not a rooted tree yet, but it is a tree in which we essentially pick out one vertex to be designated as the root and every other edge is directed away from that root. And we typically put that at the top of the tree. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to choose a random point, one of the vertices that are already on my graph. And then I am going to make a rooted tree out of it. So I'm gonna choose H and from H, I can see that I have four branches, and these are directed. When you have a rooted tree, all of these are directed, but what you'll notice about rooted trees is quite often they won't show the direction. So H had I coming off of it, and G and F and A. I'm gonna have to move A off to the side. And that pretty much took care of this whole section down here. But now from A, A is going to have some branches off or just one branch off of it down to B. And again, that would be directed. And then B branches off into both C and D. Again, directed. And then D branches down into E. So this is one way to make the tree that I gave you into a rooted tree. So I could have chosen really any of those vertices. I just chose one that looked to be a little bit more complicated than the others. So this is how I would create a rooted tree. So again, I've taken the root, stuck it at the top, and then everything flows away from there. Let's take a look at more terminology for rooted trees, and we're just going to sort of skip around and I'll put a check mark next to them once we've talked about them. So again, we're looking at a rooted tree, and if you'll notice, I didn't use the direction on this, but this is a directed graph. And I'm going to start here in the middle for parent, child, sibling, ancestor, descendants. These are all terms that you probably know in the English language, and they're pretty straightforward. So. If I'm looking, say, at A, A has a child of B and a child of C. So A is the parent and B and C are children. Siblings would include nodes that have the same parent, so B and C would con be considered siblings. If we're looking at ancestors or descendants, again, that's the same as the normal English language. So if I'm looking at A, A has descendants of B and C and D and E and F and G and H and I and J and K, whereas all of those have an ancestor of A. So those are pretty straightforward because it's the same notation or the same idea of an actual family. So now let's talk about the things that aren't the same. So now we have, and again, I'm going to get rid of all of my other markings. Now we have our tree and we want to talk about leaves or internal vertices. So it's each of these vertices is either a leaf or an internal vertice. An internal vertice has children 
or at least one child. So A and B and C and G and F and E and D are all internal vertices. Whereas a leaf would be that it has no children. And so in my graph here, I would be looking at H, I, J, and K, no children. So if you'll notice, those are both subsets of my full rooted tree. And then we talk about an M airy tree or a binary tree. So if we're talking about an M airy tree, actually let's start with binary tree. If we're talking about a binary tree, a binary tree means that as I'm drawing my graph, that each vertex has, oops, has at most two, because binary means two, has at most two children. So A, B, C, D, E, F. So it's okay for it to have one, but it's at most two. So F, G, H, we get the idea. So this would be an example of a binary tree because if you'll notice, there are no internal vertices that have more than two children. An M airy tree would be like a three airy tree or a four airy tree. So this is a two airy tree. We call it a binary tree because we have a specific name for it. But let's say there were 47 you know, branches off of a node or an internal vertice, then we would call it a 47 airy tree. So you get the idea. That is the terminology that we'll use for rooted trees. I'm going to give you some properties of trees and what I'm going to do is not something I typically do. So typically, if I'm going to give you properties of trees, I'm going to take you through each property and I'm going to explain to you exactly where it came from and why it works and probably give you an example and this would be a very long video. Because this is a simple introduction to trees and the last section or topic that we're going to cover in this course, I'm only going to just provide you with the properties. And if you are interested in trees and want to know more, you can certainly move on to the combinatorics playlist and look at the videos um, in that course that have to do with trees because I go into much more detail in those videos than I will for this course, which is just an introduction. So the first one is a tree with n vertices has n minus one edges. That one's pretty straightforward and I have a feeling you can understand where that came from all on your own. Then we have a full M airy tree. Now I want you to understand what a full M airy tree is. We already talked about an M airy tree. So like a binary tree would be at most two children for each internal vertice. So if I'm looking, for instance, at a full binary tree, that means because it's full, there is uh, there we go. I can't think and write at the same time sometimes. Because it's full, each internal vertice has exactly, so not at most two edges, but exactly two edges. So this is an example of a full binary tree. And if I wanted to add another um, row to that, again, each of these would have two guys coming off of them. So you get the idea. Um, I'm not going to do that just because I don't want to come up with all of the letters there, but you get the idea what a full MRE tree is. So this is a relationship that says to find the number of vertices, we can take the number of internal vertices, multiply it by M, where M is of course the number of children that each internal vertice will have, and add one. So where did this one come from? So obviously, if I'm taking all of the internal vertices, which in this case there are three, if I multiply that by two, because I have a binary tree, I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, six. How many vertices do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's where that plus one comes in. Now I'm going to leave it to you to figure out how that math works because you can actually mathematically work that out. And then the others I'm really not going to go through with you at all. I'm just going to say, hey, look, here's a fun formula that someone has proved is true. 
Um, and I, again, I'm not going to go through them. I am going to show you how they might be used, but these are all just formulas for you to take a look at. So if we have a full, and again, these are only for full MRE trees. They don't work for just a regular binary tree. It has to be a full binary tree or a full three airy tree or four airy tree. So if we have N vertices, then we have N minus one divided by M internal vertices and m minus one times n plus one all divided by m leaves. Leaves, remember, were those uh, the children at the bottom that don't have their own children. If we have i internal vertices, then we have m times i plus one um, is the number of total vertices and m minus one times i plus one total leaves. And then l leaves, so an m -ary tree with L leaves has M times L minus one divided by M minus one vertices and L minus one divided by M minus one internal vertices. Now you might be saying, okay, well that's great. When do I use this? Well, you'll use them in different circumstances. So the way that I have it sort of pieced out like this helps us to know which one to use when. So based on the fact that we know how many vertices we have, or we know how many internal vertices, or we know how many leaves we have, you might choose different formulas to use. So I've sort of boxed off all of the formulas that you might use. I suggest you write them down or just take a screenshot of this page before I wrote all over it uh, so you can refer back to it. So now let's take a look at the type of question or a type of question we might be asked to solve using our knowledge of trees. Um, and again, just like any math question in any course that you've ever taken in your entire life or will take in your entire life, the hardest part is to take a real life situation and to be able to interpret it into a way that we can model it with some sort of mathematical structure. Because once we model it with a mathematical structure, it's just a simple computational problem. And that's what we want to do. So the hard part is modeling it. So let's model this one together and see what we can come up with. So suppose someone starts a chain letter. So you might be too young to remember chain letters, but chain letters happen when some person gets a chain letter and then sends it off to however many people, and in this case that's four other people, and then each of those people sends it off to four other people, and each of those people sends it off to four other people, and you get the idea. So I don't want to draw all of this, and the reason I don't want to draw it is because it says 100 people read it but don't send it. So I read ahead and said, <laughs> that's stupid, I don't want to make this picture. Instead, I'm going to think about the question being asked and see if I can determine which part of the tree I'm trying to find. So the question, or there's actually two questions. So question one says, how many people have seen the letter, including the original sender, so including that guy at the top, if no one receives more than one letter and the chain ends after 100 people read it but don't send it on? So that's question one. So the question then becomes, what part of the tree do I know and what part of the tree am I trying to solve for? So again, let's take a look at what we're given. How many people have seen the letter, including the original sender, if no one receives more than one letter? Now, this no one receives more than one letter part is telling me that this is a tree. Because if somebody could receive more than one letter, then all of a sudden it's not a tree and I can't use all of those things that I know about trees. So what I do know is this fact. The chain ends after 100 people read it but do not send it on. So on a tree, if you think about the structure of a tree, that's these guys at the end. What are those guys at the end called? Those are leaves. So for question one, I have 100 leaves. What I also know is that everyone's asked to send it to four other people. So this is an M, it's an M airy tree where M is four, four other people. So everybody does it. What does that tell me? This is a full M airy tree. So if it's a full M airy tree, I can use all of those fun formulas that I learned on my last slide. So here's how I might put this together. 
I'm trying to find how many people have seen the letter. How many people have seen the letter is the total number of vertices because the person who sent it out has seen it, everybody he sends it out to has seen it, everybody that those people send it out to has seen it, but then we have 100 people who read it but don't send it on. So now let's take a look. I can use my formula that says n equals ml minus one over m minus one. So n, or the total number who have seen it, would be four times 100 minus one over four minus one which is 400 minus one or 399 divided by four minus one, which is three, which is 133. 133 would be the total number of people who've seen the letter, including the original sender. So now let's take a look at question two. Question two says how many people sent out the letter? So again, I have to think about it in terms of a tree. In a tree, what is the people who sent out the letter? Well, we know that I'm looking now for an internal vertice. If I find all of the internal vertices, that's all of the people who have children, right? And people who have children would be people who sent the letter out to other people. So I can use I equals L minus one over M minus one. So I, which is the number of internal vertices, is equal to L, the number of leaves, minus one, divided by M, which is the M airy tree, four minus one, which is 99 over three, or 33 people who uh, sent out the letter. Up next is you can just be done with discrete mathematics, or if you'd like to continue your study of discrete mathematics, you can take combinatorics or discrete math too. I do have a video series um, that is called combinatorics that you can certainly find on my YouTube page um, or take the course with me at Bellevue University.